So Monique has a presentation now. She's going to talk about more of um, ways to be involved in the state level as well, because we, we've we got to try to get some relief here for farmers that are being totally, um, totally crushed by all the fees and the market not being there, because it's across the board. And so uh, with that, Monique, let, let's hear how we can get more involved. I'm just a small time farmer and I started getting involved in the local policy by going to the Board of Supervisor meetings, watching Ron, watching Casey from my television screen at home, watching YouTube and was like, I got to get out there. I got to speak to this because this is really important. And so I have been really engaged just as my own. Um, and so I went to the last two state meetings that happened in Sacramento um, for the Cannabis Advisory Committee and spoke during the public comment period about the topics that were important to me um, and my community. So I'm just going to hit some highlights. They have, I think, 10 um, subcommittees. And in the interest of time, I just picked out microbusiness and um, the cultivation subcommittee. Um, and just give you guys an overview of where we're at with that right now. So the Cultivators Subcommittee um, made a couple recommendations um, that they want to see the um, Bureau of Cannabis Control basically change in the current regulation. So this is hopefully the hopeful part of our presentation today. Um, the first two were uh, the generator hour meters. Um, they want to amend section 8306 number D to allow aftermarket non-resettable hour meters to be installed. Um, and the comment from CDFA was that there's no provision right now in the ordinance or in the um, regulation that prohibits that, but they still wanted to get this put in because they feel like it's not clearly defined for the public. Um, so that recommended motion passed through the larger subcommittee. Um, the second one was to add the definition of outdoor cultivation um, by allowing the use of light deprivation techniques. Um, that was also um, passed, or that passed by the whole committee. Um, and then the other recommendations were, unfortunately, in statute, so it has to be um, a legislative fix, basically. Okay, so these ones, we're gonna, it's going to be a little bit more of a battle to get them fixed. Um, so I'll just hit them really quick. Uh, number one was composting waste and waste definition and the ability to sell unused waste products that lack the cannabinoids. Um, the second one, this one is really important to me personally because I do have a 2,500 square foot permit in Mendocino County, but the state for this type of license only allows me 25 plants. Um, so they want to add square footage of 2,500 and 5,000 to the specialty cottage and the cottage license types. It is? Oh, 5,000 in already. Just not the 25? Okay, cool. Um, and then number three is to allow cultivators to transport their product to nearby licensed processors without obtaining additional licensure. Um, that's a really important one. The ones that are going to be in bold that you're going to see in a moment, um, these ones were taken out of the, um, the meeting in L.A. and they wanted to, it was my understanding, to basically bring those ones forward in that meeting, but the meeting went so long that they didn't even have enough time to really talk about it. Um, oops, wait, go back. So the other one is to allow cultivated material to be transferred between a and M designation license types until the point of sale. Um, this is a topic that was discussed in a lot of the different subcommittees, um, and a lot of public comment was expressed about how cultivators really shouldn't be the ones designating um, the crop as adult use or medical use. We should wait till it goes to the retail location for that to be designated because the plant stays the same the whole time. It's really at the end point that that should be decided. So that got a lot of support. Um, the next one is to create a cultivation-based tax incentive for products being set aside for compassionate use programs. That was a really important topic, and they all agreed to move that one forward um, before the next meeting. 
Uh, number six was cultivators should be able to batch per area at the time of harvest for track and trace purposes and that they should not need to identify each harvest back to the individual plant. Uh, number seven, the CAC make changes to the lab testing system to address the burdens that may impede a path to legalization, such as the loss of strains, high cost, inefficient accuracy levels, lack of protections to the cultivator, among others. Um, they said that some of those items are in statute and some of them aren't, so they have to kind of pick that apart a little bit more. Um, number eight, consideration of issues related to scaled licensing tiers for nurseries. Packaging of seeds and batch count by bulk weight, established genetic repositories, providing flexibility to develop genetic diversity, allowing cultivators to transport propagated plant material and seeds, removing the requirement for nurseries to designate seed and or plant stock as A or M material, allowing cultivators to provide nurseries with genetic stock, allowing cultivators to provide other cultivators with plant materials in an emergency, provided proper documentation for all of the above. And I just think it's great. Like, they're really trying to work to fix these problems. So, yeah, because <laughs> we're showing up. We're speaking to it. Um, number nine, uh, create a mechanism for cultivators to conduct self-transport distribution of their own product to a centralized processing facility, manufacturing facility, distributor, or a lab for pre-testing without the same requirements of the existing transportation license, including BCC regulation sections 5044 and 5047, which really pertain to um, cameras, by either amending the existing transportation distribution license or creating a new license type. Um, this one I'm really excited about, and I really hope we can work to figure this one out because as a cultivator, um, we need to have, this is a bottleneck right now in my opinion, if we have to take our product to a distribution facility and then a testing lab has to go to the distributor to test the product. I mean, that's a lot of movement happening. So if we have the ability to bring our product to the testing lab, that's gonna alleviate some of that bottleneck. So, and that was also um, voted on by the larger subcommittee, subcommittees. Um, and then micro business subcommittee didn't even have a chance to speak at the LA meeting because they ran out of time. And that meeting went for seven hours. I think they had a half hour lunch break. They didn't take any other breaks besides that. Um, so this is gonna come up at the next meeting. Um, and so I'll go ahead and go through this. Um, these are recommendations related to regulatory changes that can be adopted. Um, the first one is about security requirements for micro businesses and that they should be determined by the local jurisdiction and the regulations should not be unduly burdensome to small businesses and micro businesses. Um, there was a lot of discussion during this, uh, on this topic and that what works in LA doesn't work in Mendocino County. So let's put it up to the local jurisdictions to decide how they wanna maneuver the security issues. <clears throat> number two, clarification of micro business that includes tiers based on gross receipts and the number of employees. The fee schedule should be redefined to include a ceiling that delineates when the business is no longer considered a micro business. Incentives should be provided based on equity for compassionate use and rural operators. Um, on this one, they were really talking about at some point a micro business isn't a micro business anymore. One, and like, where are we gonna cap it? Because people are gonna take advantage of this license type and it's really designed for small farmers, small businesses to kind of be a competitor or a competitor against the larger corporations. But if large corporations are taking advantage of that micro license type, that's an issue. So I think this will be a good one if we can get that to be amended. And then these are the recommendations that do require statutory changes. Number one, micro-business licensees should be allowed to utilize farm stand sales as well as farm direct sales model, um, such as CSAs, without a brick and mortar to satisfy retail component of the license. Number two, all micro-business activities should not have to take place on a single premise. Number three, micro-business licensees should be allowed to conduct off-site processing as one of their qualifying activities and use shared facilities for any of their activities. Number four, recognizing that micro-businesses frequently cannot operate at one contiguous location in large part because of local land use ordinances and that it can be cost prohibitive for a micro-business to obtain multiple licenses. An accessory license should be created to tie premises together beyond the simple geographic location while ensuring that the flow of the product maintain, maintains a single chain of custody. 
And I just think there's a lot of thought going into these subcommittee meetings. And you know, a lot of it too is the public getting up and expressing the issues and the concerns. And the people, at least that I've witnessed in these panels, they really are listening to us. And this is what's coming out of it. So um, let's see. Why isn't it working? And so this is. Uh, the next Cannabis Advisory Committee meeting is on May 17th in Oakland. They haven't announced the exact time or the location yet, but this is important. Go to this meeting. Like, really. It's amazing, like, to get up and to speak during public comment and express what you're facing as a cultivator or whatever business type you have within this industry. They want to hear from us. Like, these people are our voice right now. So unless we tell them, this is a problem, this regulation doesn't work, then it's not going to change. And we have this opportunity right now to affect it, and it's really empowering as an individual to just get up and speak and have your voice be heard. So... I hope that that's the takeaway for all of us is that we continue to stay engaged because this is our livelihood. This is our life and we're not going to just give it up. So stay engaged. <laughs> and also make sure that you stay informed. Um, like people, sometimes people see those and they think that the rules have already changed and that's not how it works. So understanding how the regulatory and the statutory scheme works and how the law changes. These advisory meetings are critical towards establishing better regulations. And if people show up at them and give public comment, then they are, the people who are listening to those are advising the individuals making the law. So you can't read what was just said, although these are great ideas and these are things that the industry is hopefully moving in and, and walk away thinking that those rules have already changed. It's a process.